Imagine a love so powerful, so all-consuming, that it becomes your entire world. Now imagine that world slowly crumbling, taking your sanity with it. This isn't your typical romance story. This is the dark reality of obsessive love. Hey everyone, welcome to another eye-opening video. Today we're diving deep into a topic that's both fascinating and frightening. The five stages of obsessive love. And let me tell you, stage four is going to shock you. Obsessive love isn't your run-of-the-mill infatuation. It's an unhealthy extreme attachment that can destroy lives. We're talking about a pattern that starts with butterflies and ends in potential danger. As we explore these stages, you'll see how a seemingly innocent crush can spiral into something much more sinister. Now, I know you're wondering about stage four. Well, let's just say it's called the desperation stage for a reason. It's where things can take a truly alarming turn and understanding it could literally save lives. But before we jump in, I need to make something clear. This video is for informational purposes only. If you or someone you know is experiencing obsessive love, whether you're the one feeling it or the object of it, please seek professional help. This is a serious issue that requires expert intervention. All right, let's break down these five stages and see just how deep this rabbit hole goes. Let's dive into stage one, attraction. This is where it all begins, and on the surface, it might seem like a typical crush. But in obsessive love, everything is amplified. It starts with an initial infatuation that hits like a tidal wave. The person experiencing obsessive love becomes overwhelmed with feelings of excitement and desire. Their heart races, palms sweat, and suddenly, the object of their affection seems to be the most captivating person on the planet. This leads to an intense focus on the person they're attracted to. They might find themselves constantly checking the other person's social media, memorizing their schedule, or finding excuses to be in the same places. It's not just casual interest, it's an all-consuming preoccupation. Next comes idealization. In their mind, the object of affection becomes perfect. They can do no wrong. Any flaws are either ignored or twisted into charming quirks. This isn't seeing someone through rose-colored glasses, it's more like rose-colored blinders. As the obsession grows, so do the daydreams. The person might spend hours imagining scenarios with their crush, from chance encounters to elaborate fantasies about their future together. These thoughts become more frequent and intense, often interfering with daily life and responsibilities. Now, what are the signs to watch for? Look out for an inability to focus on anything else. Extreme mood swings based on interactions or lack thereof with the person neglecting other relationships and responsibilities. Constant need to talk about or be near the person feeling possessive or jealous even without any actual relationship. Remember, while some of these feelings can be normal in the early stages of attraction, it's the intensity and persistence that sets obsessive love apart. If you notice these signs in yourself or someone else, it's important to take a step back and evaluate the situation carefully. As we move into stage two, anxious attachment, things start to take a more serious turn. This is where the initial excitement of attraction morphs into something more unstable and potentially harmful. The hallmark of this stage is a constant need for reassurance. The person experiencing obsessive love becomes increasingly insecure about their relationship or potential relationship with the object of their affection. They might constantly seek validation, asking for confirmation of feelings or commitment, even if there isn't an actual relationship in place. This behavior is driven by an intense fear of abandonment. The thought of losing the person they're obsessed with becomes unbearable. This fear can lead to clingy behavior, excessive texting or calling, and extreme reactions to perceived slights or periods of no contact. Over-analysis becomes the norm. Every interaction, no matter how small, is scrutinized for hidden meanings. A delayed text response might be interpreted as a sign of waning interest. A casual conversation with someone else could be seen as a threat. This constant overthinking often leads to misinterpretations and unfounded suspicions. Emotional instability is another key feature of this stage. The person's mood becomes entirely dependent on their interactions with the object of their obsession. A positive interaction can lead to euphoria, while a negative one, or even just a lack of interaction, can plunge them into despair. 
This emotional roller coaster can be exhausting for both the person experiencing it and those around them. Now, let's talk about potential causes and risk factors. Obsessive love doesn't develop in a vacuum. It's often rooted in low self-esteem or self-worth, childhood trauma or neglect, attachment issues from past relationships, mental health conditions like borderline personality disorder or relationship OCD, societal pressures, and unrealistic romantic ideals. It's crucial to understand that these factors don't excuse obsessive behavior, but they can help explain why some people are more susceptible to developing obsessive love patterns. If you recognize these signs in yourself or someone you know, it's important to seek help. This pattern of anxious attachment can be incredibly damaging, and it often escalates to even more concerning behaviors in the next stages. Remember, healthy love should bring stability and joy, not constant anxiety and fear. As we enter stage three, it's obsession. We're venturing into increasingly dangerous territory. This is where the line between intense attraction and unhealthy fixation becomes glaringly apparent. Intrusive thoughts take center stage in this phase. The object of obsession dominates every waking moment and often invades dreams as well. These aren't just passing thoughts, they're persistent, unwanted, and often distressing. The person might find themselves unable to stop thinking about their obsession, even when they want to focus on other things. This leads to a severe difficulty in concentrating on other aspects of life. Work performance may suffer, hobbies get neglected, and other relationships start to crumble. The world narrows down to a singular focus on the person they're obsessed with at the expense of everything else. Personal responsibilities often fall by the wayside during this stage. Bills might go unpaid, household chores neglected, and self-care routines abandoned. The obsessed person may stop eating regularly or lose sleep, all because their mind is so preoccupied with thoughts of their obsession. Perhaps most alarmingly, this is the stage where stalking behaviors often emerge. This can take many forms. Constantly monitoring social media accounts, driving by the person's home or workplace repeatedly, coincidentally showing up at places the person frequents, using mutual friends or technology to track the person's movements. In extreme cases, this might escalate to physical following or surveillance. It's crucial to understand that these behaviors are not romantic gestures. They're violations of privacy and personal boundaries that can cause significant distress to the target of the obsession. The impact on mental health at this stage can be severe. The obsessed person may experience increased anxiety and depression, mood swings, and emotional instability difficulty sleeping or eating, isolation from friends and family, in some cases, suicidal thoughts. If the obsession isn't reciprocated, this stage of obsession can be incredibly damaging, not only to the person experiencing it, but also to the object of their fixation and to their surrounding relationships. It's a critical point where intervention becomes crucial to prevent further escalation into the even more dangerous stages that follow. If you recognize these behaviors in yourself or someone you know, it's imperative to seek professional help immediately. This level of obsession is not something that typically resolves on its own and can lead to serious consequences if left unchecked. We've now reached stage four, desperation. And let me tell you, this is where things take a truly alarming turn. This stage is the most concerning because it's where the obsession transforms into potentially dangerous actions. The desperation stage is characterized by extreme jealousy and possessiveness. The obsessed person views their object of affection as a possession, something that belongs solely to them. Any perceived threat, real or imagined, can trigger intense jealousy. This might manifest as accusations of cheating, attempts to isolate the person from friends and family, or demands for constant contact and updates. Manipulation and control tactics become prevalent. The obsessed individual may resort to emotional blackmail, guilt tripping, or even gaslighting to maintain control over their target. They might alternate between showering the person with affection and subjecting them to emotional abuse, creating a confusing and destabilizing environment. One of the most disturbing aspects of this stage is the potential for threats of self-harm or suicide. The obsessed person might declare that they can't live without the other person, threatening to hurt themselves if the object of their affection 
tries to leave or doesn't comply with their demands. It's crucial to understand that these threats are a form of emotional manipulation and should always be taken seriously. Stalking behaviors, which may have started in the previous stage, often escalate dramatically. This could involve constant calls, texts or emails, showing up uninvited at home or work installing tracking devices or spyware, breaking into the person's home, threatening friends or family members. Perhaps most alarmingly, this stage carries a significant potential for violence. If the obsessed person feels they're losing control or that their target is slipping away, they may resort to physical intimidation or outright violence. This can be directed at the object of obsession, perceived rivals, or even themselves. For victims and their loved ones, it's crucial to recognize the warning signs. Sudden, extreme mood swings, possessive language, you belong to me, threats or actions that make you feel unsafe, violation of personal boundaries, isolation from support systems, unexplained appearances at various locations. If you or someone you know is experiencing these behaviors, it's imperative to take immediate action. Contact law enforcement, seek help from domestic violence organizations, and prioritize safety above all else. Remember, this isn't love. It's a dangerous obsession that requires professional intervention. As we reach the final stage, stage five, deterioration, we witness the complete unraveling of the obsessed individual's mental and emotional state. This stage is characterized by a profound breakdown that affects every aspect of their life. The emotional breakdown in this stage is severe and all-encompassing. The person may experience intense mood swings, uncontrollable outbursts of anger or sadness, and a general sense of emotional instability. This isn't just a bad day or a rough patch, it's a complete collapse of their emotional regulation abilities. Severe depression often sets in during this stage. The realization that their obsessive love will never be fulfilled, combined with the consequences of their actions in previous stages, can lead to a deep, debilitating depression. This isn't just feeling sad, we're talking about a potentially life-threatening mental health crisis. Perhaps one of the most devastating aspects of this stage is the complete loss of self-identity. The person's entire sense of self has become so intertwined with their obsession that when it's clear it can't be fulfilled, they're left with nothing. They may struggle to remember who they were before the obsession began or to imagine a future without the person they fixated on. This loss of identity combined with severe depression can lead to extremely self-destructive behaviors. This might include substance abuse as a form of escape, reckless behavior with no regard for personal safety, self-harm or renewed suicide attempts, complete withdrawal from society. It's crucial to understand that at this stage, the person is in dire need of professional help. The risk of self-harm or suicide is at its highest and intervention is absolutely necessary. If you or someone you know has reached this stage, it's imperative to seek immediate medical and psychological assistance. Remember, obsessive love is not a romantic ideal. It's a dangerous pattern that can destroy lives. Recognition and early intervention are key to preventing the progression to these final devastating stages. As we wrap up this journey through the five stages of obsessive love, let's recap. We've seen how initial attraction can spiral into anxious attachment then into full-blown obsession, followed by the dangerous desperation stage, and finally, complete emotional deterioration. It's crucial to recognize the early signs of this pattern, whether in yourself or someone you know. Remember, healthy love doesn't consume you, it complements your life. If you're struggling with obsessive thoughts or behaviors, or if you're the target of someone's obsession, please reach out for help. Organizations like the National Domestic Violence Hotline or local mental health services can provide crucial support and guidance. Don't hesitate to seek professional help. It could literally save a life. Obsessive love is a serious issue and spreading awareness is key to prevention and early intervention. If you found this video informative, please like, subscribe, and share it with others who might benefit from this knowledge. Together, we can promote healthier relationships and protect those at risk. Stay safe and remember, true love uplifts, it doesn't destroy.